Welcome to worship. I have one announcement to share with you, and that is a reminder that for the month of January, we are collecting laundry soap for the uh, DPCO food pantry. Um, so you can bring that in uh, during the week, or you can drop it off on Sunday mornings when you stop by to pick up Holy Communion. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned, sinned against you and our neighbors. neighbors. We, we have, have turned, turned away, away from, from your invitation, invitation to, to new life. life. We, we have, have turned, turned away from, from the lowly and downtrodden. In, in your abundant, abundant mercy, forgive, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join in singing, This is the Feast. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. Thanks be to God. Radiant diamond bursting inside us, we cannot contain 
your love will surely come find us like blazing wildfires singing your name God of mercy sweet love of mine I have surrendered to your design may this offering stretch across the sky Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain. Your love will surely come find us like blazing wildfires. God of mercy, sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your design. May this offering stretch across the skies, and these hallelujahs be multiplied. Sweet love of mine, I have surrendered to your design. May this offering stretch across the skies, and these hallelujahs be multiplied. These hallelujahs. Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Who has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the waters flow. God declares the word to Jacob, statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nation. They do not know God's judgments. Alleluia. Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, 
He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. It's 2021. And for most of us, the new year could not get here fast enough. Curbs started filling up with discarded Christmas trees on December 26th, and the bright lights started coming down soon after that, all in an effort to put 2020 behind us and move on. And I will admit that while I tend to be a strong observer of the tree stays up until epiphany, it's been a challenge for me to wait this year as well. So it's fitting that before we dive full on into this new year, our gospel pauses us, turns us back once more to Christmas, inviting us to dwell a little longer in the wonder of the word becoming flesh, to not so quickly leave behind the story of the incarnation, but reflect once again on what it means that with all of its risk and all of its promise, God became one of us all so that we would know the Father's heart, so that we would become one in Christ, so that our destiny would be fulfilled, our destiny as adopted, beloved children of God. That's one of the things the readings from Ephesians we heard earlier reminds us of, that we are children of God, children because of God adopting us, naming us God's own, as it was God's good pleasure and will to do so. The Apostle Paul, in this letter to the Ephesians and to us, impresses on us the certainty of our true identity, our election as God's children through Jesus Christ. Paul writes, Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, he destined us, for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to his good pleasure. Think about how amazing that is, this election, this choosing, God's choosing us. It predates creation. He chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world. God chose us. It's done. It's not conditional. It is destined, all through the will and grace of the Creator, all done according to his good pleasure. You and me, each and every one of us, baggage, mistakes, failures, triumphs, and all, we have been and forever will be God's chosen children. Consider what that means for all the other ways we think about and describe ourselves and others. All other descriptors and roles, they are important, but insufficient, valuable, but partial. They tell a piece of our story, but not the whole story. They may be helpful, but they are not definitive. What is definitive, and therefore more important than all the good or bad things we carry around with us, is that God has chosen to call us God's own children. Children who hold infinite worth in God's eyes, not because of anything we have done, but because of what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. That chosenness, that identity, has held us through the challenges of this last year and will hold us into the new year and beyond. We are one as children of God, because God in Christ has shown us and told us that God's love and God's grace is for all people, uniting us without condition or exception. And while we are all one as children of God, we are also a diverse bunch of children, which the Apostle Paul reminds us is exactly as God planned it. 
Now, the fact that we are all different may not surprise us, but what might surprise us is that in this letter to the Ephesians, the Apostle Paul thanks God for the foresight and grace to plan our human, messy diversity. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing, who will gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. The Apostle give thank, gives thanks that God not only planned our diversity, but will also one day gather us all, in all our difference, in all our varying races, beliefs, practices, and ideologies. God will gather us all, this whole messy world of us, to God's self. And for that, the Apostle gives thanks. In fact, thanksgiving is what much of this letter is about. On the second Sunday of Christmas, let's take a cue from that apostle and be thankful. Thankful for our diversity. Thankful for what 2020 has taught us. Things like appreciating hugs and gatherings with family and friends. Thankfulness for scientists, healthcare workers, and vaccines. Thankful for the hope of a new year. Thankful for our chosenness in Christ. While much of the previous year was spent in lament for what we felt was lost, perhaps we can begin 2021 in thankfulness for all that we have been given, for the beauty of this world, for the gift of diversity, for a God whose good pleasure is to cover us with grace-filled love. As we prepare for this new year, as we take down the tree and the lights and we move on from Christmas. Let's do so with thankful hearts as we reflect on what the story means for us and for how we live our lives. To consider, as one theologian put it, that if the origin of the message of Christmas is that the word becomes flesh and dwells among us, then the culmination of the season is that our flesh becomes the praise of God who makes us all one. May 2021 be the year your flesh, your life, is begun and lived in praise and thanksgiving to the one from whom we have received grace upon grace, the one who chose us and makes us one. Thanks be to God. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of the angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Redeeming God, you gather together your people from the farthest parts of the earth. Protect your church from stumbling. Let it not be overcome by sorrow, division, or despair. Make us radiant with goodness, that we might live always to the praise of your glory. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You bring together heaven and earth. All creation testifies to your splendor, Hold the ecosystems of this earth in delicate balance, from coastlands to farmlands, forests to wetlands, deserts to rainforests. Show us new ways to live in harmony with the world around us. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You overflow with grace upon grace. Expand the imaginations of those who serve in positions of authority. Open their hearts to the needs of their nations and communities. Protect all those in harm's way and those risking danger for the sake of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You bring consolation to those who weep. Embrace those who feel far off, excluded, or defeated. Accompany those living with chronic and invisible illness. Sustain the weak and weary. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You come to us in the beauty of darkness and of light. Bring justice and reconciliation to communities divided by oppressions and misuse of power. Guide us to speak holy words of advocacy and truth. Help us to honor your image in one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You turn our mourning into joy. We give thanks for those who have died in faith. In the fullness of time, gather us all together in your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I invite you to share in offering and thanks and praise to God and in support of ministry as we sing As With Gladness. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to the love the God, love from the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.